we're gonna kind of walk you through um, tracking the game recovery part and so we're gonna do it with arrow uh, but before we actually lay that first little trail and it's gonna be very very simple and it's gonna be um, I think the important part to, to realize is dogs track we don't train them to track they do it naturally we teach them what what we want them to find. We teach them certain scents, scent discrimination. We also teach them um, in training, the part of the value in training is for me to be able to read my dog and understand its body language when it's on the track and when it's off because I lay the track um, for training. So I know where it is. So I can kind of tell when the dog is on it because of how they look and you'll see some body language stuff. I, I'm always talking about reading your dog's body language. Um, we'll see when they're on it, we'll see when they're off of it. We'll see what they do to work back into it. So uh, tracking for, for most dogs is a, it's just a big puzzle. Um, it's problem solving. They're, getting all, they're taking all these parts and pieces and putting them together and then in the end they get something which is uh, a reward of some sort. I, we have talked about with Arrow, I like hide wrapped bumpers as rewards. We've already kind of introduced her to the idea of this thing is good, it's not a chew toy. Um, she'll pick it up, she's not retrieving it real well yet we haven't gotten into that that far. Um, she started making little retrieves in real controlled environments. I'm not even worried about the object. I just, I don't care if it's a tennis ball, I don't care if it's a sock, whatever it is, I just need to get her retrieving before I worry about her retrieving the right thing. But I, w I do get in the habit of, and I use these at the end. Um, I think it's a nice little token reward for the dog, especially if they are retrievers, um, because they get to pick it up and they get to make a retrieve and that is a big reward for them. Um, we're gonna show you, so I, I use this. Now, I talked about it in a couple other videos. This is the actual hide. So if you look at it, it's that size, it's wrapped up. This is on a puppy bumper. It'll also fit on a standard size bumper that we, we sell. I like these, these fire hose bumpers, real durable. Um, just I like the material on them and, and we have three different, four different sizes of them, three different colors of them. But this hide is designed to be able to go on a bumper. Um, whether it be a puppy, a standard, you could put it on a large one too if you wanted to. Um, the skinny ones, it might be a little bit big for because it'll wrap over. I just electrical tape it to it. Now, when I do this, this is where some people get confused. You have this is fleshed and dried. You don't. This won't spoil. Um, it, it's there's no meat. There's it's been fleshed dry, and dried, just like a, a hide would be if you put it up for tanning. We do that here. Uh, I don't do it. Our guys do it. Uh, my son does a lot of it. But uh, it's it's a lot of work. You flesh off all the stuff, then you dry them. And so we do that, and then we package them, and then we sell them. But when you go to use it, and this is one, this is one of those pieces, when you go to use it, you have to rehydrate it. So by rehydrating it, I just put it in a bucket of water, and I set a rock on top of it, and it starts to soak, and it becomes pliable again. This one's, this one's been, I've used this one for probably a year now. Um, I've stored it in my freezer. So when you get it, from the store, you order it online from us, or Amazon has it. it when you get it, you you it's it doesn't need it doesn't need any treatment. It doesn't need any to be stored in any special ways. Once you rehydrate it, which is what you need to do to in order to get the scent started again, um, scent is bacteria. Bacteria needs moisture. So when that scent starts to be produced, uh, when you get it wet, it'll start producing a natural scent. I soak it. This was soaked again, uh, I soaked it this morning for about 15 minutes. And you can see it's real flexible. Then I would wrap it around a bumper, I would electrical tape it, and then I'd set it out on a sunny day, and I'd let it dry real quick. Then it stays like this, and you don't have to worry about it. Now don't get this wet, and then put it in your training bag. Don't get this wet, and leave it in some spot that it's not gonna dry out quickly because what'll happen is it'll spoil and the hair will pull. The hair will pull out. That's how you know it's, the, the hide is bad. Um, so, but what, what we'll do is when I'm done with this, and I'm gonna put scent on this yet when we lay the trail, but when I'm done with this, I literally take this little drag line, I take the little clip that we use for it, I wrap it all up, I put it in a little sandwich bag and I put it in the freezer and then it'll stay. 
and then when it comes back out I put it in a little bit of water and I kind of thaw it out and then I use it again but when I'm done laying the trail with this I try not to handle this one as much as possible I put scent on it which we're gonna put blood trail scent on it and we'll show you that we're gonna do that with the pup but we put that on this hide and it acts almost as a sponge you get the natural hair scents you get this there's 13 different scents in that blood trail scent I make it myself um, cleaned out the freezer today I got proof there's you don't want to take a peek in there right now but there's all sorts of stuff that is found on a track and we try to replicate as many of them as we can we put it on into that scent and then the dogs are able to decipher and separate smells when they're processing them so they smell each smell individually so when you start taking some of those scents away that may not be there on the track there are other ones that are that are in that scent so that's that's part of the process for the dogs and how they process scent but we're going to use this hide you're going to use this clip so when you hydrate it you take a knife you poke a little hole in it you take the clip now that's just a hide this is the whole kit so the hide a booklet that goes with it a bottle of scent the clip and the drag line you, and there's directions that kind of walk you through this, but it, it's really simple, but if you don't follow it correctly, like I had a guy message me the other day, he did it completely backwards. He would store it in the freezer dry, and then you get it wet and leave it. And he said, I can't figure it out, my hides keep going bad. Well, you're doing it kind of backwards. So um, you punch a hole through this, you put that clip through it, it's like that and now you got a little drag line for it so now before so that is one of my main ways of laying scent trails um, the other thing and i'm going to show you it right now is so this is a liver and i'm going to use this rope and this clip for this now you don't have to use a venison liver or a deer liver um, i prefer it much obviously um, but you could use a beef liver if you don't have a beef liver you could go, or you don't have a deer liver you could go to the, the butcher and get a beef liver but this is a this is one so make a note this fall start saving them if you're interested in training your tracking dog i always have one or two in my freezer this is a full one this is from last season that I kept um, it's too big I don't need the whole thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna cut it in half and I'll start this will be what I use this and you know, I'll use this this summer and preparing for the fall so just cut it in half and then what you're gonna do is I like to take a little get into a little bit thicker part of it and I'm just gonna punch a hole through it Make sure you don't cut yourself, but tip the tip of the knife through it. Then you got your clip. And this all comes in the kit. And you clip that on. And now I've got my drag line. This is what we're going to start the little pup out with. And so this has a really sweet odor to it. Dogs love it. Um, some people don't. Some people like liver. Some people don't. I personally, I, I, I do like it. Um, eating it. I don't eat deer liver, but um, I like beef liver. It's got a different taste to it. Um, it's got a different smell to it for sure. Um, liver treats are big. Uh, I see a lot of people giving dogs liver treats, dried liver treats. Um, they're real popular. My vet, I was just at the vet with the puppy and they, that's all they give the pup, pups when they're getting shots is these little dried liver treats. So this is a very rewarding thing for our dogs. And so what, what I use this for is just early on, um, once or twice, let them chase it down and we're gonna show you that. We're gonna actually do it. We're gonna let them chase it down. We're gonna let them smell it. They, they'll smell it not on purpose they'll just be chasing it down visually and smelling it at the same time and then what we'll do is lay it as long as depending on how they do then we'll lay it and let them not see it and track it and understand that this thing is at the end and I let them lick it I don't let them chew it I don't let them eat it some people will cut a piece off and give it there's a lot of different ways um, of doing this stuff but this is just how I do it I don't give them it to eat um, I'm pretty sensitive and pretty touchy on what my dogs eat. I, I give them their food. Um, I don't feed them anything else. So um, I will let them lick on it though. I'll let them put their mouth on it. I'll let them get this huge reward of, God, what is this thing? It smells so good, it tastes so good. I found it and the reason I found it is because ultimately I had to use my nose to do it. I'll replace that with the hide and, and from a scent trail standpoint, because this is really easy. This is, that liver is very easy for them to find. Um, it's real strong scent. I, I can smell it. Uh, 
it's smart, it's strong. This is not as strong, but we can control how strong we want to make it. I think it's real important to understand you control the amount of scent you use based on the conditions more than anything. Um, people always ask how much to use. I don't know how much to use because I don't know the dog, I don't know the experience that the dog has, and I don't know what the scenting conditions are. If the conditions are poor, help them out. If the conditions are really good, challenge them a bit, use a little bit less. Um, but so you, that varies, there's no set answer on that. But what I'll do is put the blood trail on the hide and then at the end, let them find the actual bumper. This is the last thing. Um, and so this is a little bit big for Arrow. I'm gonna see what size collar. We need to put a flat collar on her. Um, uh, we're a tracking state. Wisconsin's a leash tracking state, so you can track, but you have to have the dog on a leash. Um, there's lots of states that are like that, especially throughout the northern parts of the states. Southern and the southern states um, allow off-leash tracking. You just gotta check your regulations, um, and I recommend everybody do that, regardless of where what state you're in. You gotta know. They all have little little tweaks with their rules, but I'm gonna put a flat collar on the dog. Um, I'm gonna get him used to a flat collar. My dogs normally don't wear collars at all. Um, um, so that is a little bit of a um, uh, adjustment for him. But what I use it for is control and to be legal. But I also, and, I, and I'll be honest, I like it. I like the feel, I like being on the other end of it. I can tell when they're on the track, or an older dog, I can tell when he's on the track based on the way he's pulling or the way he feels on the line. A uh, younger dog, I gotta figure that part out. But So I don't mind that, I don't mind the control part. Um, it is a little bit of a pain in the woods, that's why we're using this material. This slides through the woods really easy. This doesn't get tangled as easily as a rope. It's a, a rubber coated um, material, you can see it it kind of unwinds itself pretty easily. Now you'll get it into a knot. A good, a good tracker gets really good with handling these to make sure you're not, it's to keep them loose. It's just like a cowboy, I guess, with a rope. They, they become real used to and, and, and it's a technique. It's a, it just takes practice. But um, we're gonna put this on. Now this is real heavy and I don't know that I'm gonna put this on arrow, especially for the training we're doing to start out. Um, I may just let her kind of go. I may use a lighter cord. Um, um, I'm not going to use a leash. I'm not going to use a slip lead and collar because this is a huge difference from the heel work we've been working on. I work so much on heel and keeping them in position. I don't want them to think that they can't get out in front. And I don't want them to confuse the idea of tracking all the time, meaning they're going to get out in front all the time. This has to be an on off switch for them. You put something new on them, you bring something out that's new and you're consistent with it. Every time we track, we're going to incorporate something like this and they're gonna all of a sudden go oh we're doing that I can get out in front of him when she when I put my little collar and slip collar and lead on she's gonna go oh, I gotta get in position so that is a real big difference and so it's something that we start imprinting in them pretty early um, today I'm not so worried about that today I'm just worried about let's just get this little puppy to, to track let's get this little puppy to find success let's get this little puppy to use her nose and get a reward start with the liver we'll go to the hide we'll add, we'll add with added scent to it um, so we're gonna do that, but I wanted to give you a quick, and probably wasn't that quick, but give you an idea of the tools and the stuff and how we set up to do it, and then I'm gonna actually show you us using it. So we've got, we've got Arrow. Um, we just kind of gave you a little bit of a rundown of our stuff. Um, the one thing I forgot to mention was tennis balls. I use, um, this is another thing that you can do this season is save some hair from your tennis balls. I market deer, it's obviously, but I got ducks and grouse and partridge, or partridge and woodcock and I got all sorts of birds, pheasants. So I just bag individual tennis bags differently. These are things that we can use for little hunt commands. <clears throat> Watch some of our videos on shed dogs and we talk about hunt commands we use antler scent tennis balls um, scented tennis balls for it do the same drill but just use it with and I, I'll what I'll do is these will get a little bit wet from the dog picking them up or you can put them in water and then put them in the bag with the hair and then put it in the freezer so I just want I, I forgot about talking about that but those are just fun little games that we'll do in between training lines I don't run training lines very often um, uh, I think they're mentally challenging and I don't want to burn a dog out. So 
very few times, um, you know, maybe once a week uh, through the summer. And then as we get closer to season, I might go twice a week, but I like to go a training line and add some difficulty to it. The problem with, the hardest part about tracking is, is it takes a while to set it up. It's not just as easy as 15 minutes to go out and, and work a dog on a bunch of memories or it's just, it's a little different. You gotta set it up and then you gotta age the track. You gotta let it, let, sometimes it's 16 hours before we're actually tracking it with our older dogs, sometimes longer. Um, but so it's, it's a process that you gotta kind of plan for. Um, but with her and a lot of times what I like to do is lay a trail in the evening and track it first thing in the morning that's down the road with older dogs but just to start out with her um, so we're gonna get we're gonna get her going we're gonna have Mason my son is gonna help me um, this is visual I, I'm not even challenging her nose. Um, I do think she's big enough to drag the tracking leash. Um, if it were, if she were six weeks younger, which I think you can do this with young dogs, 10, 11, 12 weeks old, I think you can do it. She's about 20 weeks. Um, I think you just gotta be realistic and set it up properly. But she's big enough and I think bold enough to drag that leash. If she create, if it creates a lot of issues, I'll just take it off. But I'm gonna let her drag it, I think. Um, but what, I, what we're gonna do is, so she's under control. This is that on off switch that we've been working on with her. Um, when we first got here, she smelled that clearly and she was very interested in it but she fought through that temptation she settled down now we're going to get her a little bit jacked up we're going to kind of get excited with her voice going to get mason to get a little excited and then he's going to take off with it and we're going to turn this into quite a game um, where she gets to run now big distinct difference here is i'm going to put this on and this is almost like a little indicator to her so another reason I like my training bag, now I just clip this out of the way. So I am gonna prepare and make sure I don't have this. And all of a sudden she's on this, and when she's on this, she doesn't have to be in heel position. This is the first time she's ever had it on, so I don't expect her to know that. But she's, she's going, wow, a little bit of freedom here. That's okay, he's not tapping on my neck. Now look at her nose too. There is a lot of scent around here. Um, Again, this is where you gotta get coordinated with managing your lead. Now, if this lead becomes an issue, I'll take it off. Um, but I just gotta get it set up right. No, no. Okay, now, I feel good. Mason's gonna drop that down, make a little noise. She's gonna watch. I'm gonna make her hold up for a second. And then when she goes, we're gonna let her go. Um, and the idea is let her catch it and let her play with it. Don't let her eat it. Okay, so go ahead, Mace. Just make some noise, make some noise. Okay, go, 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 go. Drag it, 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 drag it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Now look at how she hits that spot. Good, good, good. Good girl, let her get it. Good girl, lots of praise, Mace. Good girl, no, don't tell her no at all. No no's at all. Good, 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 good. Good girl, that's okay, that's okay. Let her lick it. She's cautious of it. Good girl, that's okay, She's let her lick it. There, good girl. What is that, oh, that's a good girl. Good girl. Now that's okay, that's okay. Good, 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 good. All right, pick it back up, put it away. Now, that, she didn't really track it. Uh, she more chased it down. But, it was a lot of fun, okay? So now, now she's investigating. We got some snow goose decoys and she goes, oh my God, what's going on around here? Sit down, sit down. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna switch the lead. Girls are heading off to school. I'm gonna switch the lead back. No, no. This is what we're working on. We talk about in our heel work video, um, putting that on and off without turning it into a wrestling match. We need to get better at it. Again, we pick this up. Now she's back to heel. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're gonna take her over here because we just ran down that line. I just wanna get off it so that I can get her nose up. So I'm gonna switch again. Sit. Now, 
resetting this, I have to I have to find a balance of control and letting her be a little bit excited. Um, I ha this is a struggle for me because I hate giving up. I hate letting him run amok. Um, I just cringe at it. Sit because I go look at all these bad habits we're putting in and don't train something in that I don't like. And so I take I switch collars, switch leashes. She's got a little bit of freedom now. She's got this one on. Um, get her straightened out. Mace get her excited. Now this one, the difference that we're gonna do is we're gonna let her go and Mason's gonna drag it into that little bit of taller grass and I want him in that little bit of taller grass. Now again, it, don't do it exactly the way I'm doing it because I don't know your dog and I don't know how challenging it needs to be. I'm gonna let him drag almost into that cover before I let her go. She's gonna watch him. She's pretty smart, she's a little bit older. And I think her nose is real good. I'm gonna let him drag the exact same line. He's gonna go into the tall grass and then about five, 10 feet is all and stay at the end of that line and be ready to take it so she doesn't eat it. And then we're gonna let her figure this out. So this is that problem solving. This is that puzzle part. So go ahead, make some noise. You stop, Mace, and now, Ben, you need to be filming this. So there she lost the track. That's the first time I haven't, <coughs> I haven't felt pressure. This is the problem solving. All of a sudden it went away. Oh, good girl. Good girl. That's okay. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, very good, very good. Oh, good girl, good girl, lots of praise, lots of praise. Okay, Mace, pick that up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give her this. What is this, what is this, oh, good girl. Now that loses value next to the liver, but you can pick this up, I'll let you pick this up. Come on, come on, come on, good. Come on, come on, good girl, very good. So you can see that liver is real strong value to her. Good girl, come on, come on, that's a good dog. Come on, good dog, good dog. And now we just replaced it and kind of made it into the same little thing that we were doing on the driveway with her. Remember, she's not a real strong retriever, so I'm real pleased with this. Good, good. Now I'll take it. Here, 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 here. Now if it was a little retriever of mine, I might even take this and play a little bit of a game of fetch with her. I don't want to turn this into a messy retrieve thing though, but she's not a real strong retriever. If it was a real strong retriever, I'd do that. I probably wouldn't do it with her. Come on, come on, come on. What is this? What is that? Oh, you found it, good girl. Come on, come on, come on, come on, get out of there. She gets a, feels a little pressure getting tangled with that. Come on. She goes, ah, oh, I'll go right back to that. I prefer this. So, come on, come on. Now, let's do this. Mace, you walk off. You go back. Um, just because she did really well there. So I'm just gonna get let her settle back down. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No. I don't wanna let her break away right now. Cause we'd be, we wouldn't be able to call her back. Nope. This is where this is where I go the value in a well trained dog from an obedience standpoint is so important. So that you're not having to go through this constantly. 
like she's a puppy. So we're working on it. And the value of it is going to be down the road when we can turn it on a little bit of an on and off with her. Now, early on like this, I don't want to put, I don't want to smother her either. I don't want to smother that excitement. She's just real excited. But honestly, this is about how she was um, excitement level wise sit when we brought her here three weeks ago all the time. Come on, come on, come on. And we just couldn't have could sit. We just couldn't have that constantly going on. It wouldn't, it would, just wouldn't work. Nope. Sit. So, sit. 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 Arrow. Sit. Good. And I'm just going to let her think. Good. She's so excited. Good. Sit. Sit. So I'm going to let her kind of just start to decompress a little bit. Probably myself too. I just don't like dogs that I don't have control of. I don't like dogs that are, are just loose cannons. So that's the balance between tracking and foundation. And you gotta have both. And I, I emphasize foundation as much or more than anything because the tracking part is, she's never done this before and she's doing it like really naturally. It's because she knows how to do it and she can do it. I think the problem is, is we put so much of an emphasis on the fun stuff that we lose control of everything else. And we get a dog that might be very good at some of these things in the field, but you can't have them at a soccer game for your kids. You can't take them camping. You can't have them in the house. And to me, there's no value in that. Good. So we gotta have the ability to balance it. Good. Very good. And that's bringing her back down. You don't have to get her, you don't have to put a lot of effort into getting her excited. She is not the exception. Most puppies are like that. Sit. Good. You can see now all of a sudden she's reeled back in and she's responsive. We're going to find a fresh spot. Um, so we'll cut away from it. We'll find a new spot. We're going to lay a trail um, and we're going to have her do it without the eyes. Uh, we're just going to do it with the nose. It'll be a slower process. You'll see her have to think through it. Sit. Sit, sit. Really difficult to navigate through all these scents and you can just see her working, but so let's find a new spot. We'll set it up again and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pick up there. Good, come on. So what we're gonna do is a little bit different, maybe a little ambitious, um, but because she is a little bit older, now, like I said, I, won't, I don't recommend you just replicating exactly what I'm doing if you've got a 10-week-old puppy or 12-week-old puppy, or maybe a 24-week-old puppy, I don't care. You take steps, so like I may be happy with, if a dog's not interested in this, or not super excited about this, or not showing a ton of, ton of promise with it, don't panic. Um, you can put it away and do it again later. But I might even drag it in a shortcut grass five yards and let the dog catch it, if that's what it takes, to just get the dog to have success. Then extend it 10 yards and let the dog chase it again. And then go 15 and let him chase it again. And kind of, I, I've done it before where I've built up the enthusiasm for this game. If they're just not interested in it to start out with, you gotta figure out how to make it fun. I have some retrievers that don't like retrieving. Um, it doesn't happen often, but I've had it. So you got to figure out how to make it fun, make it a game, make it have a reward. I'm going to challenge her a little bit. Um, we're going to take the, the blood trail scent and I'm going to put a pretty good coating on this because we're not using the liver now. Instead, we're going to use this hide, which has quite a bit of scent to it as, it's, as, a, as a rule, plus the uh, scent that we're adding. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to I'm going to put a little scent on this one. Kind of let that soak in cuz what Mason's going to do what Mason's going to do is he's going to drag through this this cover and it's going to basically act as a little wall. So he's got a straight line he's going to drag and he's going to go about 40 yards. You don't have to go 40, you could go 
10. Like I said, you could go 100 if you think your dog's up to it. Don't, don't find, don't set them up to fail this early. I, we're probably being a little more ambitious because we're filming it. She's only with us another day and then she's gonna be going home. So, but I wanna show you, probably <clears throat> struggle with this. She may, she may quite honestly struggle with this. That's okay, I want you to see that. But he's gonna drag it through this tall grass. He's gonna drag it, then it's short grass on the other side. So it's gonna get a lot easier. <clears throat> but she's gonna have to have the confidence to go through this wall using her nose, drag it across that lawn, straight line, and there's a little clump of cover over there. And he's gonna take that dummy and he's gonna pitch it in there and he's gonna leave it. And then he's just gonna stand behind it. Not far, not make any noise, just stand there behind it. Um, we're gonna let her get that dummy if she can find it. We're hoping she does. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is to start out with, I'm gonna get her, get her turned off of the idea of I'm on this adjustable leader and I got a heel and all this stuff. Now, again, you saw how jacked up she was at the end of the last track, and then I gotta kinda figure out how to bring her down. Now we, we're gonna be jacking her back up. So it's a real, real roller coaster of excitement um, in us managing it, me managing it as well. Um, so Mace, you get her excited. You can you hold that one in your, just hold it or whatever. Get that one excited and lay a little bit of scent right here. Um, he, I saw when he, it was just dripping a little bit. So there's scent there and then go straight through that cover. And you're gonna drag that through. And now all of a sudden that hide just vanished and you can see, boy, she's really interested in that. And then make a straight line, Mace, look as quick as you can. Cause I don't want her to go through the cover and see him. I want this to be a nose thing. So I want him to get behind it. Good, good. The other thing you can do at this point is if your dog is struggling to find a spot to start, what I like to do is take a little ball of dirt something that's small enough that she's not gonna find it. Here, 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 here. Throw it to the spot where that scent is and just give her a visual mark. Come on, come on. Okay, okay, let's go. Now I'm just gonna let her kind of do nature's thing. And you can see this is a memory thing too. Good, good. This wall might be a little bit much for her to go through. Nope, 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 come on, come on, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Nope, she wants to go around it. Come on, come on, you gotta trust that nose, come on. Nope, nope, come on, come on. Good, good, good. Good girl, good girl, what did you find? Oh, what did you find? What did you find? That's a good girl. So she got that one. Take that one away, Mace. Good girl. Put da, 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 da. What did you do? Oh, what is that? Oh, good girl. Good girl. You can see that one doesn't have nearly reward to her. Very good. Come on, come on. Oh, that's a good girl. Good girl. Now kind of slowly reel her in. This is where the lack of retrieve doesn't help. I don't want the chew. Don't want it to turn into a chew toy. Good. Very good. Very good. Very good. You can see how simple, I mean, this is really simple, guys. Um, now, these are all little, these were little, very, very short, very, very simple tracking setups. What was real interesting is, so again, and I, I don't recommend talking. That's the hard part about the cameras. Don't talk, just watch. Encourage, watch. Figure them out. What I thought was real interesting with her was how, how much attention she had on Mason when he went through the cover. Like if I had let her go, which is what we did in the past, we just let her go. Um, When we would just let her go, she would have ran off. Here, 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 come on, come on. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. What are you doing? Come on, come on. Pick it up, Mace, so she can't get it. There you go. Here. See how easy it is when you just eliminate the chance for them to fail. So when, when he first went through the cover, she would have went right with him. I mean, she was focused, she was dialed. And it wasn't but maybe 10 or 15 seconds later, I think she just kind of forgot about it. Uh, it went away. And she just out of sight, out of mind. That's why I carry a bag. That's why when I take something and I put it out of sight, it's out of mind. If that thing isn't hanging down, she's not coming to get it. So it just it's so that was clear back there. She saw it for a while and then she was interested and then you know what I wasn't interested anymore. And then what was was interesting to me was when I let her go, she, what did she want to do? She wanted to go around the wall. She wanted to go that way, she wanted to go this way, she wanted to go that way. And I don't think for a second that she didn't want to go to see if she couldn't find something, but she wasn't that motivated to try to go through an intimidating wall where you don't know what's on the other side. So the same issue comes up with little retrievers pushing into cover. They like to skirt the edge. So we train them and we teach them um, through processes to push into cover, push into cover, push into cover. So it was the same thing with her. I was glad I didn't have to go first. Sometimes you gotta be the first one through. I, I didn't have to, but you could see all of a sudden a little light switch flipped in her and she went, ah, the hell with it, woof, and she just went. And as soon as she went, now the wind is coming right into our face. It worked out perfectly for this little line. I think you gotta keep that in mind when you're setting stuff up. Where's the wind? Because that's the only way they're gonna smell is being downwind. But the wind hit us in the face. She might have caught scent of it at that point and said, I'm going. And she had that orange leash on, and when that orange leash on is, she can go. This, she can't go. Come on, come on, come on. Sit. This is a control thing. That orange one, she gets to have a little freedom. Sit, sit. And this is going back down. So we get her all excited, and then we bring her back down. I would never want to lose control. Um, we'll let it slip a little bit for some freedom for stuff like this, but we gotta maintain it. So anyway, she pl plows through that wall, and once she plowed through that wall, that was easy. Um, there was no, I don't think she missed it or got off the track much at all. It was in her face. She got here, she went right to that. She didn't even look at the hide, the dummy. She went right to that. That's where the scent was coming from. Um, so, and that one's wet, and that one just laid the trail. That one's producing more scent than this one. This one's not wet, it's not producing a lot of scent. So there's not a lot of bacteria growth going on there creating scent. So that's why we did put some scent on it. Um, this one I don't get wet and then store, it will spoil. That one is wet, that one is gonna go back into a freezer bag, that one's going right back in the freezer, we'll use it again. Um, so that's just a, a real simple way of um, how we go about introducing them to some tracks. From that, we start to add complexity. We add distance, we add time. We didn't age this at all. Um, we start to age tracks. Lots of steps and lots of layers and lots of complexities that, that come down the road. But um, that game recovery kit that we showed in the beginning, that's got all the stuff that we use um, and a booklet. We also did a DVD on tracking. We did uh, game recovery tracking. And I build a lot of my training around traditional retriever training. I can tell you right now, I don't care if they're retrievers or not, it'll work. Um, so my foundation work for retrievers is working with a shepherd no different than it would with any other breed. So um, that's all, all tools and information and stuff. Our YouTube channel has a bunch of stuff on tracking on it. We're going to continue to put stuff on there. So um, that was a really successful early introduction for Arrow when it comes to tracking and uh, we look forward to kind of seeing her progress. But I just, it's like I said before guys, this is the fun stuff. You have to have the foundation first if you're gonna be able to do this stuff or you're gonna have a dog that's out of control and you're just not gonna be happy with in the end. But early on, we are gonna bring out some of these natural traits that they have and that is kind of fun. So that was really a successful morning here uh, with Arrow um, prior to her going home. And like I said, we're gonna continue on with her journey of training and look forward to seeing her slowly grow up here.